Hello again everyone, I am Instructor Victor Campos and this is CIS 165 JavaScript Programming. We've already written a little bit of HTML code and a little bit of CSS code. Now it's time for the third bit of code that we're going to write, JavaScript. This is the third column of our project. We've got HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. JavaScript is often known as the behavior layer. HTML is often known as the content layer, CSS as the presentation layer, and JavaScript as the behavior layer. We'll see what that means right now. So I'm still in lesson zero. I'm still practicing with my L1 file. So I'll open visual code. It remembered that I was working with this project, so I'll just pick it up where I was at. And uh, we've written all this HTML code, and we started to write some CSS code. It's in the style block. Next, I'll write some JavaScript. And we'll see that we can write JavaScript in a variety of ways. For the moment, we'll write it embedded into this file, just like we wrote some embedded CSS code. It's best practice to write our JavaScript embedded before the end of the body tag. So after my paragraph on line 21, I'll add a new line and I'll start writing the script tag, which has a pair. So I'm opening and closing the script tag. I'm going to back up then into the script block. And our first JavaScript command will be console.log open and close parentheses. So parentheses, it is shift 9 and shift 0. 9 and 0, right? 9 on the keyboard, 0 on the keyboard, shift 9, shift 0. And then at the end of the line, semicolon. We've seen the semicolon before at the end of a statement for CSS. Sort of similar here in that it terminates or ends your statement. Console.log We'll talk in detail, and you'll see in your book about what is the console. It's an object. We'll see the uh, log, which is a method. What is object method? All of that stuff. What does that mean? We'll get to that. But we're going to say we're going to access the console object and its log method. Within the parentheses, then we will write the opening double quote and the closing double quote. We've seen that, open and close quotes, way up the top where we had meta car set. Between the opening and closing double quotes, I'm going to write, this is JavaScript. So I'm writing some JavaScript. Looks like something's going to happen in my project. JavaScript is interactivity. I'm going to save and open the L1 HTML file. It opened up my web browser, and I don't see anywhere in my viewport that I wrote, this is JavaScript. Well, that's because we did not say to write that code in the viewport or the window object. We said, write, this is JavaScript in the console object. And the reason that I said early on in this course that we want to use uh, Google Chrome is because we want to use its debugger and all the modern web browsers have a debugger but they're all a little bit different and just so that we're all looking at the same thing I recommended on an early video get Google Chrome so now what we're gonna do is if you go up to the little menu on the top right corner that's customize and control Google Chrome those three little lines you can click there go to the more tools menu and we have developer tools, which is keyboard shortcut for Windows, Control Shift I. I'm going to open developer tools. This opens up a panel. Mine is on the right side. Yours may appear below, wherever it appears. Mine's on the right side, and it's showing all of the code of HTML that I've written so far. And if I hover my mouse over these, uh, elements they highlight on the left side. We'll see why this is valuable later. But do you notice we have 
Element tab, Console tab, Sources tab, etc. Console. We wrote console.log. So if you open the Console tab in the browser, this is JavaScript. This is the console object, and we've used the log method to write this is JavaScript. So this bit of code at the moment is not appearing in the main viewport window. It's appearing in the console, in the developer's tool, in the debug panel. This has various names. But we're going to access this over and over and over, especially when we're writing complex JavaScript. This will tell us results. This will tell us errors. This will help us fix errors. Notice you can close it with a little X here. One way to bring it back is if you right click anywhere in your document, you should also have inspect, which could take you back to the elements tab, so console tab. Another way to get back to it is the keyboard shortcut. F12 opens it and closes it, as should control shift. I. So different ways to get back to that developer's console. Or I can see this is JavaScript. I'm going to go back, press enter, do the same thing, console.log, open close parentheses, semicolon at the end to complete that statement. Quotes, double quotes inside of the parentheses. I will write I'm really learning so much. I'll save that. Go back to the browser and run it. And notice my console now says both lines of code, and it tells you here. In your L1 HTML document, line 23, you wrote this, and line 24, you wrote that. And that's what I'm seeing here, line 23, line 24. Okay, well, this is writing into the console. How do we actually make it write in the main viewport, in the main document? Well, we've been accessing the console object, which goes off to the console screen of the browser. I want to access the main document window here. So we, this is an object as well. And again, we'll talk about what objects and methods are eventually. But here I will say document. Dot. So I'm about to access the document object of the web browser, basically all of this area. And I have a method, which is basically a command that I will execute, execute upon that object. And the method will be write, open close parentheses, semicolon. I'm about to write something on the document, in quotes, in the parentheses, Let's write, check out my JavaScript skills. Save that. Run it. And now in the main document window, you get, check out my JavaScript skills. We've accessed the document object. We've used the method to write onto it. And that's what appears on screen. You may notice that basically all of our code here is running line by line, executing line by line, and then the result shows up in the browser. So what had appeared here of check out my JavaScript was one of the last bits of code that we wrote after the other code, so it appears in sequence. This is important to know because our code is read and executed in sequence, and sometimes that causes problems when we're trying to write code to access something that doesn't exist. That's when this uh, debugger, this console output, is very valuable to help us figure out what went wrong. To reiterate the importance of the order of your code, let's do this. I'm going to back up to give myself a brand new line 23. And that means I'm going to back up to 22 and press enter so that I get a brand new line 23. I want to add some code before my existent code. So let's back up line 23. This time we'll write window, the window object, 
dot alert method, which is open and close parentheses, semicolon. Semicolon you should be seeing terminates each statement. We've got these various methods, these commands that we use them upon an object, window object. Okay, so in quotes, then I'll make it say, this is an alert. And I'll save it. I'll reload it. If you have a keen eye over here on the console, you don't see that text that used to be there until I click OK on this pop-up, and then it shows up. Let me reload that again. That disappears. This is an alert is visible. Once I click to close that, the text appears. Let me compare that here. I'm going to move that line of code, window.alert. I'm going to cut it and paste it down here. So I moved it from 23 to 27. I'll run that again. You see the subtle difference? The code in the console appears, then the alert appears. It happens in the blink of an eye, but you should notice there is a difference. One more time. Let me back this up. Cut that. Paste it. Save it. Run it. No code in my console, but the alert. Close that. Then the code in the console. This is again to show you the order of our code is important. Not so much at the moment but it will be more important when we get more complex. I'm going to delete that empty line there. This is our code so far, 29 lines of code. We've got some HTML code, some CSS code in a style block, some JavaScript in a script block. Those are the three pillars of our projects. Content layer, presentation layer, behavior layer. One more thing and then we'll wrap up. I want to mention comments. Comments are special lines of code that do not run like code and are basically notes for us. So I'm going to go into before the end of the HTML tag. I'm going to give myself a new line 29 and I'll write this HTML comment code. It's a very unique one so you'll have to memorize this one. Angle bracket, exclamation point, dash, dash, space, dash, dash, greater than. This is a comment. Notice the color. It does not execute real code. If I write here h3, this is heading 3, and then I run it in my browser, nothing shows up. Comment code does not show up, is not executed, doesn't do anything. The point of this is to write notes. So I can write instead something like project lesson one by Victor Campos. I can go back and say something like maybe up here Line 4, I'll write another comment block. Remember to close your, your tags or else everything become a comment. And I'll write a meta defines my character set. I can add the comment over here. I'm making myself notes, explaining myself to myself what this stuff means. Title writes something in the tab of the web browser. Let's jump down here. This is all optional of course, but it's very useful to make yourself notes. H1 makes text 
big, bold, and important. And by running my code, none of that appears. It's all notes for myself. Now, we have to learn uh, three different types of comment tags. This one in this format with the exclamation point is for HTML. For CSS and JavaScript, it's a different format. It looks like this. If I uh, go into the style block, I'm going to add slash asterisk, which is shift 8, space asterisk slash. That's a comment. Notice it's green. So I'm going to say uh, selected body and changed its background color and text color properties. That doesn't affect my document. I could go then also down to the JavaScript and say, let's go down here, same thing, slash, asterisk, space, asterisk, slash, and say the following wrote, the following JavaScript wrote some text to the main window. Now these comment tags can actually be broken up into multiple lines. So instead what I'm going to do is if I break that and tab it, if I then break or press enter like this, comment tag starts here, comment tag ends there. Notice the way it's written, very peculiar. But then anything in these lines right here will be commented out. So I will take advantage of that by saying document is the main window object write is the method to write HTML on the document. So I'm using comment tags for notes. And as I run it, nothing appears. Now, I'm getting a little tired of that alert popping up every single time. So comments are also useful to deactivate code. What's happening is that line 27 is making that pop up, window.alert. I don't want to delete that code. Maybe I want to use it for something else. I just want to deactivate it. Comments can deactivate code. And we've seen two different types of comment tags so far for HTML, for JavaScript and CSS. The third one is a specific one for JavaScript only, and it works to comment out a single line of code. And this is slash slash. Two slashes with no space between them makes a single line comment. So now that one line, 27, has been deactivated. If I save and run it, I no longer get that pop-up. That's what I want. It was kind of bothering me. If I take away those double slashes, it comes back. So I'm going to comment out that line. And so now here we've got a document full of HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and comments. We're on our way.